Well everyone, iOS 17 has just came out and I'll go and show you a quick beginner's guide on how to use some of the coolest features within iOS 17. And I'm really happy to show you because iOS 17 is a smaller update. There's nothing really crazy with it, but there are some cool things that I wanna kinda of demonstrate. Now the first thing I wanna show you is actually standby mode. Now this is a new feature within iOS 17 and it basically allows you to use your iPhone as some sort of digital clock kind of thing at night. So this is a really cool feature. So to start off, basically any iPhone on iOS 17 can do this. So what you wanna start off by doing is you wanna make your way over to your iPhone settings, and then you wanna scroll down until you see standby. So you wanna go and just click on your standby little thing that comes up right here. And then what you wanna do is you want to make sure these toggles are on. You also wanna make sure that your portrait mode thing isn't really locked or anything. And then what you wanna do is you wanna grab an iPhone charger, and just like this, you wanna plug it into your iPhone you want to make sure your iPhone's charging and everything. And then you want to go and power off your iPhone and you want to put it in landscape mode. Now, when it's in, when it's in landscape mode, you should be able to see that at some point, your little digital standby clock thing will come up. It may tell you at first to go ahead and actually set it up. So there might be a little panel that comes up that says, you know, set up or something. And then you'll have this little thing. So this is a brand new feature within iOS 17. It's called standby, like I just said, and it's amazing. So it allows you to go ahead and you can customize different things. So if you'd rather have your you know, calendar right here, you can see it. If you'd rather see like a digital clock thing, you can see it, or analog clock, you can see it here. And there's a couple of different things that you can do. I don't even know what this is. This is, I think this is the stock market. That'd be a horrible thing to look at in the morning. But you have a few things here, and you can also change it on the right side as well with different widgets and different things. Now, iOS 17 is still a work in progress. So there are still going to be lots and lots of changes that are going to be added. So if you're looking at this in the future, which you have to be, this will look probably different than what it's going to be in the future. But it's still a really cool thing that we have here, and I'm actually really, really happy to see that. So again, if you want to, you can click on the thing and you can customize it, and you can also unlock your phone by going through right there too. So that is basically standby mode, and it is one of the standout features within iOS 17. Now, there are some other things for one. You now have the ability within the phone application to create a new personalized contact photo. So what we can do is if we open up our phone application, we can click on contacts. And if you look right here, if you just click on someone's contact, you will see that things look a little bit different now. So if you want to, you can go ahead and actually customize your specific contact photo and person a little bit more than you used to be able to. So if you click on edit, and if you go and click on add photo, you should be able to see a newer type of panel. This thing still looks kind of the same. If you click on photos, you can go ahead and bring in an image and you can actually even get that depth effect that we used to be able to get or that we can still get on our lock screens. So if I go and add a specific photo, let's say this one right here, but what I can do is I can add this person right here. I can go and scale it around and I can go and click choose. Now, if I want to, I can add that depth effect at some point. So this is what it's basically going to look like at some point when they're calling me, I can go and now get this new poster. So I can go and click here and if I want to, this is basically what it's going to look like when they call me. So it's going to take up that whole entire page. I can go ahead and customize the font of this person who's calling me if I want, just like how on the lock screen you can change it. You can now change it here too. You can make it bigger, thicker, or like slimmer, depending on how you like it. And this looks really nice. It looks like iOS 7 font, but you can make it thick if you want to. You can change the font of the color of the person who's calling you too. So you can change that if you want to as well. You can go and change the color. Like there's a lot of options here as well, which is really cool. Now, when you're done with that, you can also choose whether you want to have that, you know, if you want to change the photo again, you have that option. You can also click on the three dots down below and you should be able to add that depth effect. But like I mentioned, there's a chance where it doesn't allow you to do it anymore because it might be messing up or something. And you can also scale this up just like this. If you want to, sometimes you should be able to get that depth effect on some wallpapers. Looks like it's not working, but you can also see it adds a little blur around it too. Now, when you're done, it'll give you a glimpse of what basically that photo is going to look like. And that is it. So really cool thing that we have the ability of seeing now. And I'm really happy Apple actually added that type of capability. Now we also have the live voicemail option, but that's not really a feature I can demonstrate now. FaceTime also has the ability now for us to actually leave a FaceTime video call, voicemail. So if we want to, let's say we called whoever, right? And for some reason they're not picking up. So in this case, if I were to call somebody, right? And they weren't able to pick up and they were on iOS 17, I would basically be able to leave a FaceTime video voicemail, much like how I could leave one on you know, FaceTime or just like a, on a phone call. So that's something that's cool. It's kind of hard to demonstrate that, but that's another option we have. iMessage also has some really cool things and I'm really excited to go ahead and show you. So for one, if we go and click on the plus button right here, 
one cool thing that we have now is the ability of transcribing our video and audio call via you know the little thing here within iMessage. So if I were to go and send this iMessage out to somebody, if I were to go and click here and if I were to go and click send, well, what would happen is I probably should send it to somebody. So if I were to go and click here and do this, I would basically be able to record the audio and then I would basically be able to send it out and it would be transcribed when I were to send it out. So it may work, it may not work yet, I don't think it's going to work, but now the audio messages are going to be transcribed so you won't even have to really do anything. You don't have to put it up to your ear to actually listen to it. Now you also have basically, you have swipe to reply, you have so many other things built in which I can pull out my other iPhone for. So again, if you want to quickly reply to messages, you can now swipe to reply. So before we had to hold down the message and basically click on reply, we now have the ability of just swiping on that specific message like this, and we now can directly reply to a specific message like that, which is really, really cool. It's a sleeker look now, which is cool. There's a new sticker drawer as well. So you can go ahead and grab stickers right from here, and you can go and bring them in if you want to. So that's something that's really awesome. So if you have specific stickers, you can go and drag them up and even add them on specific messages like this if you really want to. So that's something that's really cool and I'm really happy Apple actually ended up bringing that type of feature in into iMessage. And overall, it does look pretty nice and all your iMessage little things are at the bottom right here too, which is pretty cool in and of itself. Now, AirDrop got some really cool improvements. It's gonna be kind of far to demonstrate this, but basically if you have AirDrop on, if you're actually you know sending in a file to somebody, and if they go outside of range, well, they'll actually still be able to get that file via internet, which is crazy. And also, you can now do name drop. So essentially, if you want to share a contact with somebody and you have your contact page open, what you can do is you can just tap two iPhones next to each other like this if they have AirDrop and if they're in the same contacts. And you should be able to transfer that contact just literally via AirDrop, which again is a super, super cool thing. And the last couple of things I'll show you is within the keyboard. So for one, we actually now have autocorrect, which is a little bit better. Autocorrect has been one of those things that people have complained a lot about within iOS, you know, just in general. And with any iPhone that comes out, people always complain about it. But now Apple kind of, you know, kind of focused on it quite a bit in this specific update. As always, our keyboard settings are within general. And within here, we have our keyboard option, which is over here. So autocorrect looks to be a little bit better. Hopefully they improved it. But also we now have, you know, inline sentence finishes. So if we're typing something, right, and we say like, hi, how are you? Sometimes it'll go as go ahead and give us a suggestion, like kind of how it just did right there. It'll give us a suggestion to go ahead and finish up that sentence for us. So it might be kind of hard to see it. I just, you can see that it's kind of predicted the, you know, you for us. So now if you have an iPhone 12 or newer, you have this type of feature. So if you want, you can click that space bar and it will go ahead and finish out that sentence for you. That's a very small example. But if I were to go and continue and I say, how are you, uh, has everything, if I go and start typing that out, you might see that it'll start suggesting, I guess the sentence just like that, has everything been, and as you can see, it'll just start suggesting it been good. And if I go and start typing this, as you can see, it'll just start suggesting things. So as you type, if you wanna go ahead and you know finish out the sentence for you, you can just click that space bar and it will actually go ahead and finish out that sentence for you right there, which is amazing. Now. Those are some of the big updates I saw personally from within iOS 17. But like I mentioned, the biggest thing you can do if you're on iOS 17, I would not recommend doing it, but in the future, you know, if you're off the beta, keep your iPhone updated. Click on your general settings here, click on software update, and keep your iPhone up to date as often as you can. There's new features and new things added all the time, and it would make the most amount of sense to just keep your iPhone up to date, especially if you're on a beta, which I wouldn't recommend being on, but if you are, just go and update it, keep it on, you know, the, keep it on at the most up-to-date version of the beta if you have to. And uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.